We need you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goodbye, world. Hallelujah. Stay no longer with you. Hallelujah. 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 We recognize 
that we are not just here for show. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We are warriors. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
was encouraging someone tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 To yourself. Hallelujah. 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 You may be discouraged, but God said you are a warrior, you are a conqueror, you are an overcomer. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Our scripture reading will be read at this time by our minister, George Morris. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, that's why we're here. Amen. Bless the Lord. The scripture lesson Jesus. will be read from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 14, verses 16 to 23. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Mm. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor, and the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Amen. Here Amen. ended the lesson. Blessing. Blessing. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We would have liked to sing for you tonight. Go tell it on the monkey. But as long as you are living, you will have a challenge at some time. Amen. Yes. And so we have a challenge tonight. Amen. But we're still going to tell it on the mountain. Amen. Over the hills and everywhere. Oh, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born and more than born. And to God be the glory. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We want to look at a simple word tonight. There's two letters. Go. Go. Out of the previous message we had, focus forward. Having focused, it isn't time to continue, continue focusing. <laughs> You gotta get up and go. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh -huh. You draw plans for a house. Mm -hmm. You have them approved and all that. But you better get some materials and start building. True. Mm -hmm. If not, it would only be a plan. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And we have some going to do. Amen. Oh. Yes. yes. True. Go is. It's very simple, move from one place to another, travel, leave, depart. But for this exercise, go is more than a word. Yes. yes. Go is a command. Yes. yes. And what you're seeing here is right. Yeah. Command. 
And if you don't understand it, and you say to someone, quote my face. Hey. <laughs> go. You might not go. But if you say, look, let me tell you something. Go out of my face. Yes. Then <laughs> they know that something coming behind that. But we were commanded in the word, and we're going to get to it. It depends on who is saying go. Yes, true. In this lesson, let's do the lesson first. A great supper invited many. And he sent the servant. To, the serve, to, to, to those who were invited, said, Come, yeah. all things are now ready. <laughs> but all with one accord. Does it sound familiar? Oh, yeah. yes. Began to make excuses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You might say tonight, but that, that ain't me. <laughs> those excuses there are very simple. Bought a piece of ground and have me excuse five oxen, a wife. Oh, but we today got a real myriad of excuses. Hmm. Help us, Lord. God's invitation is the most important event in our life. Yes, no matter how it, how inconveniently it may be timed. Yes. I know some of you came in here tonight tired. Others that couldn't come because of a little challenge in the body. And another one came in with a challenge in the body. Probably more than one. So that it is not always convenient to go. And so we make excuses. Are you making excuses to avoid responding to God's call? No, that is the question you would answer for yourself. Jesus reminds us that the time will come when God will pull his invitation and offer it to others. Then it will be too late. To get into the banquet. Yes. In this chapter, we read Jesus' words against seeking status and in favor of hard work and even suffering. I don't think anybody want to hear that. True. Let us not lose sight of the end result of all our humility and self-sacrifice. A joyous banquet before our Lord. God never asks us to suffer for the sake of suffering. He never asks us to give up something good unless he plans to replace it with something even better. I'm only hearing a few people. Jesus is not calling us to join him in a labor camp, but in a feast. The marriage supper of the Lamb. When God and his beloved church will be joined forever. Let me pause here. Let us look around in our minds. 
at those that refuse to go. High and low. Way between the lines. Mm -hmm. They all have to face eternity. That's right. And eternity is how long? A year? Forever. Forever and ever and ever. And it seems as though this is a master trick. That whoever is alive feels as though he will be alive forever. We have participated in funerals in which relatives have been buried. But it seems as though it is like some sort of a hypnotic spell that we feel that like we are going to live forever. Our day is coming. And not only coming where the body is concerned, but to face Almighty God. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's right. I suddenly think about it, you know. Mm -hmm. There you are. And with all this status, mm. and all the benefits, mm. some didn't even have to drive. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were driven. driven. Yeah. Some didn't have to go by boat. Mm -hmm. They were flown mm -hmm. as often as they needed. Mm -hmm. But they are no history. Yes. So. Yes. And you and I someday will be history. That's right. Mm -hmm. So true. I only hear one person yeah. saying that. So mm -hmm. The rest of us feel we mm -hmm. live forever. But we're going to look at go, which is a command. It is not a request. Look at, let's look at another scripture, Matthew 21, 28 to 32. There a man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards, he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that tax collectors yeah. and harlots yeah. enter the kingdom of God before you. Okay. This is still calling for self examination. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to say, come me. Mm -hmm. True. I mean that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when the time comes, Excuses. Mm. Numerous excuses. But when you think about the first one, you say, well, I can't make it. Mm. Mm. But he thought about it and he said, you know what? I can do it. But it is deeper than that. Yes. The master was bringing out something. The son who said he would obey and then didn't represent me. Re he actually represents the nation of Israel in Jesus' day. They said they wanted to do God's will, but they constantly disobeyed. <laughs> you like you smell something, you think, mm -mm. They were funny, just going through the motions. It is dangerous to pretend to obey God when our hearts are far from Him. Mm. 
true. Because God knows our true intentions. Amen. In other words, put me in common vision. You can't trick God. Yeah. Our actions must match our words. All right. Let's look at another one. When the king came in to see the guests, Matthew 22, 11 to 14, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot. Take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, if you have teeth, or gums. For many are called, but few are chosen. In the culture we were looking at, two invitations were expected when wedding dinners were given. The first asked the guests to attend. The second announced that all was ready. In this story, the king invited his guests three times, and each time they rejected his invitation. God wants us to join him at his table, which will last for eternity. That's why he sends us invitations again and again. Have you accepted his invitation? No. Don't answer. Christ gives every believer. Christ has provided this garment of righteousness. Even before he saw this, you know, I said, you know, what was this garment all about? And it came to me in the spirit. A garment of righteousness. Amen. You can't Hallelujah. put on a phony garment to come into the, uh, the feast. When there's a garment of righteousness that is put up there for you and for me. For everyone. But each person must choose to put on in order to enter the king's kingdom. I am so, I am here trying to maintain my cool. Yeah. To see that not only is the world trying to pull down the standards, That's right. but the church, That's my brother, right. the church pulling down the standards of yes. Almighty God. Truly, we can under. Truly, we can't fathom God's love. Mm. Shall I say that again? Yes. Truly, we can't fathom God's love. How could He love us so mm. that we could take His standards and pull them down, mm -hmm. trample them under our feet, yes, breathing His breath, mm. eating His food? Mm. Oh my Lord! Have mercy, God. Oh dear Lord. I don't know. My Lord. Looking at another one. And this is something that we need to understand too. In Hebrews 6. Mm -hmm. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Yes. Mm. Go is there again. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Certain elementary teachings are essential for all believers to understand. Though these basics include the importance of faith, the foolishness of trying to be saved by good works. <laughs> if we could be saved by good works, why was there a need for Jesus? That's right. That's right. The meaning of baptism and spiritual gifts and the facts of resurrection and eternal life. To go on to maturity in our understanding, 
We need to move, not away from, the elementary teachings to a more complete understanding of the faith. And this is what the author intends for them to be. Mature Christians should be teaching new Christians the basics. Then acting on what they know. The mature will learn even more from God's word. Amen. Amen. These Christians needed to move beyond the basics of their faith to an understanding of Christ as the perfect high priest and the fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophecies. Rather than arguing about the respective merits of Judaism and Christianity, they needed to depend on Christ and live effectively for him. Oh, yes. Brethren, you realize that today and we are very careful what we say. Many argue about what we eat, what we should eat and what we shouldn't eat, what we wear and shouldn't do. And we have so many, I don't even know what to call them. Little idiosyncrasies. I wonder if idiosyncrasies come from idiots. Maybe, maybe. Idiosyncrasies. All these little foolish things. And our opinions, my Lord, got us in fear trouble. When a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in the form of his Holy Spirit is what we really need. And we are, it is like the children of Israel, instead of 40 days or a few days, 40 years. I have to wonder if some of us are foolish. Let me explain what you mean by that. Some of us believe that God can heal our bodies. And we believe to the point that we put God to the test, so to speak. Others, I don't know if it is maybe you're going to be. Others, Every test that man can make, we ready to take it. Yes. 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 It don't matter how much it costs. Yes. We will bar beg. I nearly said beg and steal. I nearly said it. <laughs> to get the money to fit into somebody's test. Yes. And God in the form of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. The anointing is here. Amen. Amen. If you have a pain in your body, reach up now. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The anointing is here. Hallelujah. Jesus. I am telling you, I don't want to call a name that gets you before the court. There are people who are spending what they don't have to go through tests. And at the end of the test, the money gone. And they're still suffering the pain. And there are others who... I wonder if it is something to do with the air that we breathe. What, what, are, you, what are you saying, Pastor Gray? We are so careful. There are people in distant countries. Figure that one out. There are people in distant countries who believe the word of God. Amen. Mm. Amen. And they make it so easy for a man of God mm. to do what God gave him the Amen. opportunity to do. Yes. Yes. For example, the question will be asked, all those with a particular disease mm. come. Yes. Yes. I didn't say what the particular disease is. You use your imagination. Something that society don't want you to be associated with. And you see, really, model, model looking people getting up and going to seek 
deliverance and healing. Yes. Yes. I don't know if it is the air we breathe in this area, whatever it is. Too proud. Let all those with a particular disease come. And somebody they're riddled with the disease. Huh? But they said they don't cute. They know the word go. And others in a different environment, breathing different air. Let me tell you something. Before the words could get out, they're there and they're ready to be healed. Oh my Lord. This is not time to argue about Judaism and Christianity and, and, and Islam and all kinds of the religions. This is time to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus and to know who you are. The Pharisees were always demanding to know where Jesus got his authority. <laughs> but Jesus, in the form of his Holy Spirit, got one or two wise people around here. Amen. Yes. When well, they didn't know, you know now. Because of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So when you think you're fighting us, you're fighting the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. I got a witness in here. Amen. You trying to trick Jesus into or something. They read this here. Jesus answered them with a seemingly unrelated question that exposed their real motives. <laughs> they didn't really want an answer to their question. They only wanted to trap him. Don't you know there are people trying to trap you and trap me? Jesus showed that the Pharisees wanted the truth only if it supported their own views and causes. In spite of where this video will go. There are people in high, according to say, say high society, that even if their views are wrong and they know they're wrong they are willing to spend any amount to maintain those views yes. don't you know that yes. you sure you know it yeah. it is like somebody who performs well on a particular in a particular situation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you become a threat to your superiors. Mm -hmm. how, how, why should that be? Because they think that if it, if things continue the way they are, they won't have a job. Yeah. Yeah. You find yourself now trying to back down. And just perform just ordinary. You making a you making a serious mistake. Yes. Be yourself. Yes. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Yes. I suppose they lose my job. I, don't you know? And don't I know that God is a provider? Yes. All the time. You got a better plan for you. All the time. No, I, I really don't. I really don't. You got a better plan for us. Sometimes better positions are there waiting for us. Yeah. But because we don't trust Almighty God to go where He would have us to go. Look huh? another scripture, Matthew 28 7. And go quickly and tell His disciples that He is risen from the dead. And behold, go before you in the Galilee, there shall you see it. I have told you. The angel who announced the good news that before you even get the news, 
it was drawn to my attention today that even when Jesus was departing in the form of the ascension, mm -hmm. so before you forget it, let me bring it to your attention. He had told them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, mm -hmm. baptizing people as ever mm -hmm. And the disciples were looking at The angel said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing? This same Jesus that has gone is coming again. In other words, put me in common with them. Get up and go and do what he said to do. That's right. Some of us are stargazing. Perhaps Jesus is coming. But what did he tell you to do? What did he tell me to do? Go. The angel who announced the good news of the resurrection to the women gave them four messages. Do not be afraid. The reality of the resurrection brings joy, not fear. When you are afraid, remember the empty tomb. Praise the Lord. He is not here. Jesus is not dead and is not to be looked for among the dead. He is alive with his people. Amen. 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 That amen sounds so poor. He is alive with his people Amen. in the form of his Holy Spirit. That's right. But we don't know who we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Come see the women could check the evidence themselves. The tomb was empty then. The tomb was empty then. It is empty today. The resurrection is a historic fact. Go quickly and tell. They were to spread the joy of the resurrection. We too are to go slowly. We too, <laughs> we too are to spread the great news about Jesus' resurrection. <laughs> Bless you, Lord. <laughs> and I always say this finger pointing at you and this thumb pointing at you. There are people that are looking to you and looking to me for hope. Yes. yes. I said yes. for hope. Yes. But you see that. Amen. I don't yeah. preach. Mm. I don't sing. I don't want to do nothing short, so nobody looking at me. Uh-huh. The Holy Spirit is in you and in me. And people are looking for hope. Sometimes you just open your mouth and say something ever so slight. And people say, thank you. Thank you. You just made my day. True. Amen. You know, Hallelujah. How did they make their day? Yeah. You say, why didn't say nothing? There was another one here in Luke 10, 37. And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said to Jesus unto him, Go, do, go, and do thou likewise. The lawyer treated the wounded man as a topic for discussion. You know the man that went down and, and he was attacked and robbed and this thing. The thieves as an object to exploit the priest as a problem to avoid <laughs> as the Levite as an object of curiosity only the Samaritan treated him as a person to love I'm talking about you're there, you're hurt and you remember the Levite the priest all of them 
including the thieves, make a mess of this man. Only the good Samaritan treated him as a person to love. From the parable, we learn three principles about loving one another. Love, lack of love is often easy to justify, even though it is never right. What he or she do me, I can't ever see myself loving them. And you feel justified. That's it. Our neighbor is anyone, our neighbor is anyone of any race, creed, or social background who is in need. Hmm. Not the one that lives next door. All. And love means acting to meet the person's need. Amen. Wherever you live, there are needy people close by. Oh, yes. Always. <laughs> there is no good reason for refusing to help. But they have more than me. It ain't about having more than you or more than me. It is about meeting needs. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes. John 8, 11. The woman was caught in the very act of adultery. Adultery with herself. There, there was no money involved. Hmm. I don't know she committed adultery with herself. You all ever thought about that? Yeah. They bring the woman, they bring the man. She, they said she was caught in the act of adultery. Well, really mind. Hmm. And Jesus said, and she said, Jesus asked, where are your accusers? Do you all remember the scripture? Yes. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Okay? Jesus didn't condemn the woman accused of adultery. But neither did he ignore or condone her sin. He told her to leave her life of sin. Jesus stands ready to forgive any sin in your life Amen. or my life. Yes. But confession and repentance mean a change of heart. With God's help, we can accept Christ's forgiveness and stop our wrongdoing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is willing. Yes. yes. There's another scripture. Yes, John 15, 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it. Amen. Because Jesus Christ is Lord and Master, he should call us servants. Hmm. Instead, he calls us friends. How comforting and reassuring to be chosen as Christ's friends. Because he is Lord and Master, we owe him our unqualified obedience. But most of all, Jesus asks us to obey him because we love him. Not because we are afraid of him or afraid of going to hell. Jesus made the first choice to love and to die for us. To invite us to live with him forever. We make the next choice to accept or reject his offer. Without his choice, we would have no choice to make. Mm, so true. Christians will get plenty of hatred from the world. From each other, we need love and support. 
do you allow small problems to get in the way of loving other believers? Yes, we do. Jesus commands that you love them and he will give you the strength to do it. It, he's not, it is not like commanding you to do something and not giving you the strength to do it. Here's another one. Here is another one. This is St. Paul. And he, Acts 9-6, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise. Arise and think about it. Arise and go into the city. We got to do some going, you know. And it shall be told thee what thou must do. It's interesting. Let's go through this one together. Saul thought he was pursuing heretics. But he was persecuting Jesus himself. Brethren, mm -hmm. I, I have to tell you this tonight. Those who think that you are a bit of a career and that you are a nuisance, they don't really deal with you, you know. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They're dealing with God? Yes. yes. It is because you are a representative of God that you have become their enemy. Yes. Nothing more than that. But he was persecuting Jesus himself. Anyone who persecutes believers today is also guilty of persecuting Jesus. Because believers are the body of Christ on earth. But do, but do we believe it? You, you see what I mean? And imagine the man of God says, Not him, Lord. That's impossible. He could never become a Christian. <laughs> In essence, that's what Ananias said when God told him of Saul's conversion. After all, Saul had pursued believers to their death. Despise, despite these understandable feelings, Ananias obeyed God and ministered to Saul. I remember reading that there in Ananias is saying, Lord for real? You sure this in a trick? We must obey and follow God's leading. Even when he leads us to difficult people and places. Yeah. Yeah. That is so true. I don't expect Amen. any more than one one applause for that. That is so true. We must obey and follow God's leading, even when He leads us to difficult people and places. Yes. Yes. Somebody looking at me with a straight face now. <laughs> When God chooses to send you to that individual, what are you going to do? Have to go. What are you going to do? Have to go. You got a choice. Yeah. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. When someone is dying or leaving us, his or her last words are very important. Yes. Jesus left the disciples with these last words of instruction. They were under his authority. They were to make more disciples. And the same goes for us. They were to baptize and teach these new disciples to obey Christ. Christ would be with them always. 
Whereas in previous missions, Jesus had sent his disciples only to the Jews. Their mission from now on would be worldwide. Jesus is Lord of the earth. And he died for the sins of people from all nations. We are to go, whether it is next door or to another country, and make disciples. It is not an option. It is not an option, but a command. To all who call Jesus Lord, we are not all evangelists in the formal sense, but we have all received gifts that we can use to help fulfill the Great Commission. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. As we obey, we have comfort in the knowledge that Jesus is always with us. Oh, yes. Jesus' words affirm the reality of the Trinity. Some people accuse theologians of making up the concept of the Trinity and, and reading it into scripture. As we see here, the concept comes directly from Jesus himself. He did not say baptize them into the names, but into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Trinity does not occur in scripture, but it well describes the three in one nature of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How is Jesus with us? Jesus was with the disciples physically until he ascended into heaven, and then spiritually through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit would be Jesus' presence that would never leave them. Jesus continues to be with us today through his spirit. The Old Testament prophecies and genealogies in the book of Matthew present Jesus' credentials for being king of the world. Not a military, not a military or a political leader as the disciples had originally hoped but a spiritual king who can overcome all, who can overcome some evil and rule in the heart of some people of every person if we refuse to serve the king faithfully we are disloyal loyal subjects fit only to be banished from the kingdom we must make Jesus king of our lives and worship him as our savior and lord. In short, brethren, talk is cheap. When I said to the person who is in charge of one section, uh, what do we call it again? Help me here. Hospitality. I spoke words to the person in charge of hospitality. And from those words, the person went and spoke with other persons and did what was supposed to be done and on all years night we got the experience yes. that's right huh are you with me yes. Yes. That's right. if the individual had only heard what i had to say that's all you what is it? But the person took it from words, put it into action, and who they spoke to took it into action, and at the end of that service, we had refreshments. Amen. 
Well, we don't have to beg the question. We've got to get up and do. We've got to get up and go. We've got to get up and go. You didn't? And I'm going to close on this note. It's only 24 hours in a day. Whichever part of the world you are. Am I right? Yes. And how you spend that time will surely, will surely be revealed in so many ways. Many of us do not go and do what we're supposed to do. This is examining yourself. And we expect the thing to do itself. And we spend the time doing something else. And then we wonder why we're so unlucky. Talk to me now. Yeah. I hear about the favor of God, but I ain't experiencing it. We can do things that are contrary to the principles of God and yet expect to get His favor. My prayer is that we will get a passion Amen. for doing what is right and going where God called us to go and the same passion for telling the demons where to go yes oh yes because just as powerful as God tells us what we must do we've got to be just as powerful Telling the demons where to go. You yeah. don't know where they belong? Hmm. Oh boy. Some of us are going to have to make our money, Jack. Mm. <laughs> I say some of us are going to have to make our money, Jack. Up to today, I received a WhatsApp. That spelled out what's happening worldwide. And it's not very sweet. And some of our core values are being challenged. What will we do? What will we do? I'm going to say that again in closing. Our very core values are being challenged not here and not yonder worldwide can you remember the time that we used to have to hire a photographer to have photographs taken can you remember? Yes. And those who went and learned photography, they learned in some years. Right now, I can look around in here tonight. And according to the way we appear, we're making a statement. The time may come that you, everybody will look alike.
can't, can't go any deeper with that. We're living in a world of change. Yes. Everybody agrees with me about the photography. But everybody is seeing this other part. Mm. As a matter of fact, depending on the temperature. Go and make disciples of others. We are under pressure. And while somebody can't stop you from believing what you believe, they can reorganize your circumstances that you will be under pressure to continue believing what you believe. That's right. That's right. So to God be the glory. Amen. Go and make disciples of others. That's, that's the last words that Jesus said. And he knew what he was saying. And he knew that we could do it, even though we are under pressure. Mm. In closing, brethren, you who may watch this video, worldwide, we are in for some serious tests. You have to know who you are. And you've got to have a strong belief in Almighty God to survive in the times up ahead. And alas, many of us who claim to know God for years are trying now to set new standards that are of lower value for the sake of a dollar. And wow. closing in prayer. Anybody want to be remembered in prayer? Father, we give you thanks and praise for your interest in us. What you're basically saying is no time to stand and stare, but to go and make disciples of others, including relatives and friends and neighbors. You didn't save us to be able to boast about it. You save us to save others. And Lord, it is my prayer tonight that those who listen to this video subsequently that know you not as Savior will know that there is hope in God. It matters not how the circumstances might appear. In the final analysis, God comes out to the rescue Amen. of his people. Yes, Lord. And so, Lord, we give you thanks. Thank we you give Jesus. you praise. Thank you. For caring. Yes. And even though we chose to ask for what was ours, so to speak, mm -hmm. and go and waste it in righteous living, mm -hmm. you're still looking to see the day that we will return to Father's house. Hallelujah. My prayer is that somebody would give his or her life to you and then be able to turn and help somebody else who need to know you as Lord and Savior. And Father, we give you thanks and we Thank give you praise Jesus. for all that you're doing on our behalf. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Now and evermore the people say, Amen. For prayer and counsel in your walk with God, please email us at armoroflightbarbados at gmail.com. Thank you and may God bless you.